All right, Jose Almeida here, uh, coming to you from the University of Miami Endovascular Research Center. We just finished a uh, laboratory here this morning. <clears throat> and basically today, what we wanted to do was to use a swine model uh, for training. Uh, training myself, and I brought a uh, colleague with me, Dr. Uh, Tino Pena from the Baptist Cardiac and Vascular Institute here in Miami who's uh, one of our local star radiologists, interventional radiologists. So this is uh, you know, a collaborative effort between vascular surgery and interventional radiology, or basically just a multidisciplinary approach to a problem. And the concept today was iliocable venous stenting using a bilateral technique. So and I just need to address these concepts, techniques, procedures were all pioneered by Dr. Raju and Dr. Neglin uh, out in Jackson, Mississippi. They've been working on this for over a decade, have done beautiful research, they've taught us all how to do this stuff. So I must say that in the way of background. Now it's new to a lot of us who are just coming into this and taking on the more complicated cases. So we've been doing iliocable venous stenting for a few years now and the concept today is that when a patient presents with an existing left iliac stent for example and they come in a couple of years later with a right iliac vein stenosis how does one manage the iliocable confluence they're not really amenable to uh, simultaneous kissing stents in that situation. So Dr. Raju and Neglin developed the fenestration technique and that's what we were trying to learn today. The fenestration technique is a stent within a stent by creating a fenestrum in the side of the original stent, a fenestration. Um, and one of the issues is that putting a wall stent within a wall stent creates jailing of the other side. So the next step was to place a Z stent in the fenestrum, uh, which is a more open cell stent and in theory will not create a contralateral flow restriction. So what Dr. Penny and I did today was to uh, uh, do this in a swine model. We used the University of Miami and Academic Center to do this. We used a swine model, uh, which shows you the value of animal research for training. I actually have a case uh, next week uh, scheduled to do this very thing. So for me, it was a good technical exercise on some of the pitfalls that I may encounter in a human. Uh, so we, we did use a multidisciplinary approach, and the reason I bring that up is at uh, IVC last year, we wanted to tackle the issue of board certification. Uh, with this uh, controversial phlebology board. And I think the message that came across, which was not the intention, was that vascular surgeons were the only ones that should be doing vein work. That was not at all the, the message. That's not at all what the lectures were. I think that was the emotional reception of some of what was uh, transpired last year. Uh, the only message was that a uh, a uh, true training pathway exists for a reason, formal training exists for a reason to develop advanced skills. So uh, today we uh, use a multidisciplinary approach. Certainly interventional radiology brought some skills today and vascular surgery brought some skills and I think together we, we learned and learned from each other. There's great value there. The other thing that's become, uh, come to the forefront much of because of the new law, Obamacare, uh, is this sunshine law. Uh, and basically the physician industry relationship has been a very valuable relationship for many, many years for innovation. And today we had representatives from Cook Medical, from Boston Scientific, and from Volcano uh, that all participated in the, uh, in, in the uh, exercise. Boston Scientific uh, brought us wall stents, catheter sheets, balloons. Cook had the Z stents, 
and a volcano with the intravascular ultrasound imaging, the IVIS technique. Without industry and their products and their input and working together like we did today, we would never move forward in the field. So I think one needs to be careful with the sunshine law. I mean regulators now that it doesn't overstep what is intended to do. Uh, which is, yes, there's been a few outliers like in any field and anything. There's always the bad apples that seem to spoil it for everybody and then the regulation tends to overextend itself and, and hurt the good people and hurt uh, the good intentions. Uh, today we saw the value of industry working with physicians to solve a problem.